We are going to transition to our guests from Bolt. So we have Tony Musen and Janelle Hussin who are going to talk about the construction trades. Perfect, I'll go first everyone. Uh, good morning, my name is Tony Musen. I'm with uh, Bolt Construction, currently the Director of Project Development, which probably doesn't mean a ton, uh, but I will, I will walk you through uh, some of my experience and how I got uh, to where I am and what I do. Good morning, everybody. I'm Janelle Huston. I'm the Director of Campus and Workforce Development, and that means that I am focused on finding young students and interns um, to join the work world. One of the things I wanted to start with uh, and add on to where Jesse uh, left off, um, Construction is a wonderful career, whether it's in the trades or, or in a management position. Um, it's a fantastic variety. I get up every day and deal with something different almost every single day, different projects, different people, different locations, um, different workforce, uh, different subcontractors. So um, if you wanna do something that's not boring, uh, construction is definitely a wonderful place to do that. Uh, I would also say that uh, through the uh, pandemic that we uh, are all still living in, construction was really deemed essential. So it is uh, a, a career path um, that we all continue to work in. Um, certainly some things slowed down, but most, for the most part, all of our projects continued uh, at a pace uh, that was pre-pandemic. So keep that in mind. You, you definitely want to choose something um, that will, will keep you working. <clears throat> a little bit about me. I graduated from De Pere High School. Uh, I currently live in De Pere, um, but graduated from De Pere in 92. Uh, I, I always knew I wanted to be uh, in the construction field and was looking for a degree uh, in engineering, uh, specifically to take me into the construction field. So I went to Michigan Tech uh, up in Houghton, Michigan uh, and graduated there with a bachelor's degree in 1997. Uh, I took uh, six months off and did an internship while I was there uh, with Robert E. Lee and Associates. So they're an engineering and surveying and an environmental company uh, based in Green Bay. Uh, so I did that in the fall of 95, uh, summer and fall of 95. Uh, I graduated from Michigan Tech, as I said, uh, in the spring of 97. And I would say my original plan was always to come back to Northeast Wisconsin somewhere and work uh, in the field. Uh, while I was there, uh, there was uh, some companies interviewing on campus. One of those was a company called Atkinson Construction uh, based out of San Francisco. I interviewed with them. Uh, they actually flew me down to a lock and dam project that they were doing uh, on the Mississippi River. And I interviewed there for a couple of days, fell in love with the work they did and saw myself doing that. So I started, uh, moved to San Francisco in the fall of 97, uh, worked there for not real long, just a few months uh, in kind of an entry level estimating role. Then I actually transferred down to a project in San Diego uh, called the East Side Reservoir Project. And those are some pictures here. Basically, we built a big reservoir, um, some big, huge equipment that we used. But the lake, if you will, on the right is about four and a half miles long and about two miles wide. We put a dam on each end of that. And then uh, that provides fresh water for Southern California. So a pretty uh, very, very unique project uh, and quite a great experience. After I was done with that project, so I was uh, in San Diego, kind of far southwest part of the country. Um, I had known some folks that worked uh, on that project that uh, ended up moving to Boston to work on a very large highway project, highway and tunnel project called the Big Dig uh, in Boston. So we transferred from the southwest to the northeast uh, and spent three years there working on uh, this project. So. Bottom left, big elevated highway that went right through downtown Boston, kind of a before picture and after picture, all of that highway ended up underground. So what was what is there now is a large uh, parkway uh, because all the, the cars are underground. 
couple pictures on the right, just humongous tunnels, right? Four or five, six lanes of traffic each way, which is a huge tunnel uh, system underneath the city of Boston. So uh, some amazing experience that I received there. Um, both of these, that, that previous experience in California, plus this one, really show the variety that I talked about um, and, and really allowed me to see different parts of the country, uh, gain some different experiences, uh, all while working, meeting new people and seeing different things. So uh, definitely had some, a lot of fun uh, in both of those locations. I just have to say, I looked at the pictures before the presentation and I couldn't figure out what I was seeing in that before and after. That is amazing. It's that is just amazing. It's really impressive um, what they did there. Um, again, if I had anybody ever, if you'd ever been in Boston previously, beautiful city with a pretty ugly highway going right through downtown. Um, now it's a beautiful city with even more park space because all those cars are underground. It's pretty awesome. So um, after spending just over five years away from Northeast Wisconsin, um, and, and my wife is uh, also from De Pere, we decided it was time to head back, which is always kind of our original plan. Uh, the project I was on in Boston was wrapped up, so needed to uh, look for a position here. Really applied to Bolt plus a few other firms and Bolt really uh, rolls to the top very quickly. Um, I started as a field engineer, um, again, based on my experience, and that's kind of our entry level project management path. Um, started as a field engineer, uh, next level would be a project engineer, getting more and more involved in the project details. And then uh, our, our project management path, uh, there's three different levels there, uh, and then all the way to senior project manager, and then beyond that to what's called the, uh, my current position, director of project uh, development. So a few pictures here that I'll explain. Again, this really talks to the variety that I absolutely love. Top right is the Door County Maritime Museum, which we recently finished right downtown Sturgeon Bay on the water. So that's a museum project. Uh, the one below that is a, a field house for uh, Ripon College, a big addition to their athletic facility there. Uh, bottom right is a huge truss uh, that we set to build a new hangar for Gulfstream uh, down in Appleton at the airport where they uh, manufacture high-end uh, custom jets. Bottom left is a fire station. I've worked on about three or four of those fire stations. That one's in Grand Chute. And then top left is Appleton Alliance Church, uh, a non-denominational church uh, down off of Highway 41 uh, in Appleton. And that auditorium seats uh, 2,000. So a huge variety of things that I uh, am lucky enough to be involved in uh, all the time. So what do I do uh, on a, I'll say daily or weekly basis? Um, really, I, one of our key top priorities is to make sure everyone go home, goes home uh, in the same shape they came to the project in. Uh, so really all of us are tasked with promoting uh, a safe workplace in a safe environment. Um, a, a schedule, quality, uh, profits, none of those are important if people go home and they are, they are not the exact same shape uh, that they came to work that day. So we really spend a lot of time focusing on that. Um, so I visit job sites. I meet with our personnel. I meet with subcontractors. And, and really uh, managing projects is really about uh, developing, coming up with a plan uh, and, and delivering to that plan. So that is really developing a, a schedule for the project. Uh, it's establishing the budget, right? Every, every project has a budget. I've never worked on one that doesn't. Uh, so establishing that budget and then making sure we uh, deliver to that budget. Uh, my role has evolved into really being the one that reports it directly to the owner, uh, whether that's an individual owner or sometimes there's like a, a committee, uh, like, a, like churches usually have a, a construction committee. So I would report directly to them. And, and really it's about, uh, my role is about maintaining momentum and keeping projects moving forward, making sure all of the folks on site have everything they need to really put the puzzle together and, and build uh, what is on paper. More recently, uh, I've evolved into meeting with potential customers and help them 
uh, develop uh, buildings or facilities that, that solve their problems. Uh, and usually we do that through uh, written proposals and presentations. So that's what I do. Uh, what can you do? Uh, classes in high school. Uh, and again, Jesse alluded to quite a few of these. Um, any sort of uh, architecture or engineering classes, I know all the schools kind of call them something different. Uh, there's even construction classes. Anything you can do to get your hands on uh, things to work with. Again, some of those are the tech ed classes too, uh, whether it's a woods class or uh, a metals class and welding. Um, you know, what's really helped me in my, my career and helped me uh, in my college studies were, were any of the physics courses, uh, any of the math courses, but specifically geometry. Um, we, we, we still, once you learn geometry skills, you can use them your entire life. Um, and even uh, any sort of material or any earth science classes. Um, Jesse also talked to this, but really public speaking. Um, being able to talk to a group, does no one's born with that? Uh, you need to develop that. So taking uh, public speaking classes and, and really any reading or, or written communications classes uh, would be significantly helpful. As far as employment, um, again, this is all about just doing, getting involved and in, in doing something and in, in being able to build uh, a reference. Really doesn't, when we look at uh, potential employment, it really doesn't matter what someone does, as long as um, they're doing it, they have good attendance and, and they can go to good, get a good reference from an employer and have a good attitude. Um, specific to the construction trades uh, or the construction field, there's, there's plenty of places that hire um, folks to do material testing, right? Soil testing and concrete testing, things like that. Um, I did some survey work for a couple summers and, and found that very, very helpful. Um, work on a residential crew, whether it's framing or siding or windows or roofing, uh, work on a concrete crew. Um, I did a, a, a summer with our uh, local city's uh, engineering firm. Um, that was also very helpful. But most importantly, anything you can do to interact with customers. Um, I think of quite a few um, family friends that we have, their, their kids work for Festival Foods, for instance, always in contact with a customer, That's, that will build your confidence uh, uh, and help build your career. So those are, those are my thoughts. All right, we'll save questions, I guess, till the end. So welcome everyone. Once again, I'm Janelle Huston, and I'm gonna briefly touch on my career journey at Bolt. I graduated from Wrightstown High School in 1994 and then went on to, to earn an associate's degree in architectural design from NWTC. Um, and just after graduation back in 1996, yes, almost 25 years ago, I joined Bolt. And I started at Bolt as an AutoCAD drafter. You know, in, in high school, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And so NWTC was a two-year degree. It, it, I knew I wanted to do something that was hands-on and a lot of variety like both Jesse and, and Tony talked about. Um, and so I thought, well, let's try this. Well, what I can tell you is it's been the most amazing career journey that I could ever have imagined. When I look back 25 years ago, graduating from NWTC, once again, as that AutoCAD drafter, I would have never thought 20 years later that I would be a director of campus and workforce development, which really means I'm recruiting. Um, so what I want to touch on today is that choose something for today and you can always make your journey to whatever you want it to be in the future. You can see that I actually had multiple positions throughout my years. I did spend approximately 17 years as a planner scheduler. So what I did was traveled around the country and worked with project teams like Tony Mewson, like Jesse's Electrical um, uh, subcontractors, and I built schedules with them on a daily basis. So we talked about the buildings you saw that Tony has created. We talked about when we were going to pour concrete, when we were going to erect steel, and when we were going to close the building up and turn it over to whomever the customer was. Never thought I would be in a planning world. That all ties back to the skill sets and classes that Tony and Jesse talked about 
which are a lot around building relationships. I could not have worked on all the projects I did or worked with the teams without being able to facilitate. And so really that's just something you should focus on. If it doesn't come easy, work on it and work on it every day. Um, one of the coolest things for me is uh, a few years ago, we built, we had a project where we had wind towers. So the picture down in the right hand corner, I am standing 300 feet on top of a wind tower. Um, it took me about 30 minutes to climb this. And um, just to be able to say I did it, and just to be able to look around and say, wow, we, we built these, and I was part of it. Next slide. All right, so that was a little bit about me. Now let's just talk about all of the career opportunities that we do have at Bolt. Um, you can see here a lot of pictures with different, different um, views of people working. What's important? People, right? At the end of the day, Tony talked about our people need to go home safely. Our people need to be inspired and empowered every day. So what's really cool is that we have all these different opportunities. So up in the top here, this the field support services area, uh, you can see that the, these are the groups that support all of our field and equipment materials. So think about cranes, think about uh, garbage cans, dumpsters, think about trucks, think about tools. Our field support services, which is located in Appleton, there we have a paint shop, heavy equipment shop, a truck repair shop, and a shipping and receiving shop. So a lot of different career choices to try out. We also employ a lot of skilled traits, apprentices, interns, youth apprentices, and co-ops. You talked, you heard Tony talk about civil engineering. His degree led into field engineering. If you go to school to be a construction manager or a field engineer or an architect, there is likely one of these opportunities that you would fall within. We also have over 2,000 craft professionals working for us. You heard Jesse talk about electricians. We don't actually employ electricians. We um, partner with companies, electrical companies, or with Jesse's uh, union local to supply electricians. But what we do have on staff is boiler makers, bricklayers, carpenters, masons, iron workers, laborers, millwrights, teamsters. That's a long list. And what we'll do here is we're gonna click on a video so you can see a few examples of what some of those trades do. And maybe you'll see that there's one that you're interested in. I'll tell you, the problem with pillows is that- There we go. <laughs> Hi, I'm John. I'm an iron worker. These are the tools of my trade. You got your lanyard, your tie-off choker, your adjustable spud wrench, and your other spud wrench. What's cool about being an iron worker, you get to go up on top of the steel, set beams. It's a little daring, I guess. You could be setting steel to work in a shutdown on the weekends or moving heavy machinery, working with cranes, setting cranes up. I grew up having people tell me that, you know, being a carpenter was not the way to go for the rest of your life, but uh, I wouldn't listen to any of that. Being a carpenter is great. It's the training, it's the stuff you get to use on a day-to-day -day basis is unbelievable. Just the amount of equipment and the tools and the knowledge you learn on every job site. When I first started here, I was 18 years old, basically fresh out of high school. I was making money faster than I could even spend it. And the more I learned, the more I was able to earn. Hi, I'm Carl and I'm a Boilermaker. My uh, parents really wanted me to go to college and uh, mostly my dad because he was worried about all my friends getting a four-year degree and being doctors and looking down on me saying, oh, he didn't go to school for four years. Yeah, I ended up with probably close to 30 grand in student loans. And now that I've been in just the Boilermakers for almost three years, probably down to about five grand left on my student loans. If you just go right into the apprenticeship, they start you off like very comfortable, well over minimum wage. Welcome to my office. This is like every kid's dream. I'm in a great big sandbox every day with a little bit more responsibility. You're not a dummy if you don't go to college. I mean, we're running million dollar pieces of equipment. 
We're uh, putting major hospitals together, uh, power plants, buildings. Um, we're lifting millions of dollars of worth of equipment every day. Um, no, no dummy can do that. I wish somebody would have told me about these jobs earlier. They're, they're really good jobs. They're good paying jobs and allows me to get the toys I like. I, I have no student loans compared to some people. You know, you, you're paying student loans off half your life, your whole life. Hi, I'm Jesse and I'm a millwright. The millwright's job is about pumps, motors, and the machinery of the industrial world. This is designed especially for you kids uh, that are out there on the farms because this is machinery that maybe you're kind of familiar with. It'll look similar, it'll operate similar, but if you can rip stuff apart, you probably put it back together for the mills and the businesses that need it. Our industry, like all the other industries, technology is becoming a bigger part, and there aren't enough guys to operate that technology. It gives a guy like me that, that's younger and may not know as much about this world as, as the older guys that I'm working with. It provides me an opportunity to get in there and, and do something that maybe they aren't comfortable with. Hi, I'm James and I'm a carpenter. I went to college and I didn't have a full understanding of what it was all about. An apprenticeship is still four years of school, but you're working the whole time you're doing that, you're getting paid to go to school. I'm just an apprentice now, but I learn a ton as an apprentice. I'll learn more as a journeyman. And then as a foreman, I'll learn even more. And at Bolt, they push the safety just like everywhere else. Every contractor pushes the safety, but Bolt pushes it, and they also give you the time to follow through with the safety, which is huge. This is a great career. I'm proud to do this as a career. I'm passionate about boiler making because it just, I'm thinking every day. Doing something that you love makes life so much easier. I love my job. I truly love my job. and. Oh, it's just awesome. All right. Lynn for helping with that. There we go. All right, so you can uh, move to the next the sound slide. Then. Make sure another one doesn't pop up because sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> right, I agree. <laughs> All right, so you just saw a, a video that shared really our union trades and the trades that you could go out and work on construction projects, travel all over the country. Um, people are needed to travel. Um, there's union halls in every, every corner of each state. So know if you were to go down an apprenticeship path into the union and decide you wanna to move to Florida, there's ways that you can transfer into unions down there and you certainly would have continuous work. All right, so jumping in quickly here to the paint shop, I just wanted to call out our youth apprenticeship program and how we are rotating youth apprentices through different opportunities to really figure out what they want to do. So for you in high school, if you have the opportunity to be able to join the youth apprenticeship program and they're able to match you with the company, um, and that means that you'd be able to go to school a portion of the day and then work for a portion of the day. It's a paid opportunity. Um, what we're doing here is on the left here is Sam Fossbender. And Sam is from Hortonville High School, and he's been working with us since last summer. He spent, I would say, the first six months working on our Kimberly Clark project. So a remodel of an office building. He learned how to be there on time. He worked with a lot of seasoned workers. Um, he learned a lot of skills and he had a lot of fun doing it. Um, his biggest words that he told me is he had no idea he could build so many relationships with so many people. Um, and so after that six months and the project wrapped up, we were able to rotate him through our paint shop. And you can see a few pictures here of Bolt has their own paint booth. It's a 10,000 square foot paint shop where we make sure all of our equipment and tools are looking good. So when they go out to job sites, customers are paying us to be professionals and we want things to look professional. So you can see in the paint shop, they took care of on the left here, just fixing up a little um, golf cart. Our golf carts are used on many, many projects to get around the job site. And so we want them looking good. We want them to be able to hold up. Um, and so you'll see a, a petty bone or a forklift, whatever you want to call it in the center here where they, have, they are working in the paint booth to, to spray it. And then the Connex over on the right-hand side is where we would store equipment on a job site. Sometimes it's actually used as a lunch break trailer. 
but know that you have an opportunity to work or rotate through our paint shop and then ultimately call it your career path if that's what you decide that you love. Next slide. Here's just a few more pictures. Bolt recently converted our pickup trucks for all of our craft uh, workers um, from, from owning them to a leased program. And when 300 pickup trucks arrived, we wanted to spray in bed liners to make sure that they could continue to be looking good and handle the work that we have going on. Um, just a few other examples of stripping down equipment and painting. You can see in the center, Sam here, our youth apprentice, had just put that door on. He was pretty proud. He put the decal on and I actually watched him put the door on. Something that uh, who, he never knew he could actually learn about. And in the paint shop, like I mentioned, they're really prepping and refurbishing heavy equipment, spraying bed liners, installing toolboxes, putting on decals, making things look great. Another one of our shops that we have in Appleton is our both weld, weld shop. And what are the responsibilities that they do in there? Well, on the right-hand side, you can be introduced to Kyle. Kyle is from Seymour High School. Kyle has been a youth apprentice with us since um, last summer. And due to the fact that he had a real desire to want to be a welder, um, we, we were trying to figure out how we could get him out on projects. Now, one of the things you heard Jesse talk a lot about was um, in the paper mills. A lot of our millwright work is in the paper mill. One of the things that we have challenges with is that students often need to be 18. So once we found that out, uh, we, we were able to reroute Kyle and have him work specifically in our weld shop and our shipping and receiving shop. He's refurbished dumpsters, toolboxes. He's welded many, many things. And then the picture in the center is truly a mentorship opportunity where um, know that each youth apprentice is paired up with a mentor and is um, certainly never left alone. They learn a lot from their mentors. And with that, that's all I have. Um, and so we can open it up to questions. Absolutely. Um, so how many apprentices does Bolt generally employ in a year? Youth apprentices or apprentices? Well, let's start with youth apprentices. Okay. So youth apprentices, it's anywhere between five and 10. Okay. But what I want you to know is that we are, it, a lot of it depends upon where our job sites are. As long as we have job sites close to where high schools are, because if you're only allowed to work for, let's say, three hours out of your school day, we need to have a quick commute for you. One of the cool things is we're kicking off a project at Lakeland University, which is down in Plymouth, and Plymouth High School happens to be within 10 minutes of driving distance. So we are creating a partnership and have one to two students uh, that are going to join us on that project. Awesome. And then what about registered apprentices? So registered apprentices, because we are a signatory to so many of dif the different trades, I would say that we're bringing in oh, five to 10 each year, if not more, uh, per trade. So you could really say that's probably 50 apprentices coming in Bolt's door on a yearly basis. And then I should touch back, the youth apprenticeship program is to get you excited about either a union apprenticeship in one of the trades or work in our and make a career out of our warehouse um, shops. Okay, great. Um, and then the other question I had was for Tony, just uh, what was the most interesting project that you worked on? Um, that's a good question. They all, they're all unique in their own ways. Um, you know, I, I would say my work uh, in Boston was probably the most unique work that I had done. Uh, I also spent a little bit of time up in Maine working on a facility that did uh, retrofit work for destroyers for the Navy, where they uh, pulled destroyers out of the water, brought them up on into a rail yard, worked on them, and then relaunched them in the Kennebec River. So pretty interesting. Um, again, that, that being said, those were just very unique projects in the country, but even every local project here has its own exciting points and, and challenges either way. Mm -hmm. Allison, do you have any questions? I have questions and comments. Uh, Tony, I, I appreciate 
um, being reminded of uh, civil engineer and just the breadth of options that are available. I, I guess my mind just always gets stuck on, we need a, need a civil engineer when we are building a building and, you know, and you do something with highways, right? But <laughs> to, I mean, that's just me, me being me, uh, but I can, how many people, so the Boston project, moving an entire highway underground, how many people truly, like, how many people were part of that? Sure. Um, I was on just a very, I mean, this was almost 20 miles of highway. I was just on a very small portion of it. I think our entire contract was for not even half a mile uh, of, of tunnel and roadway work. And in that half a mile, we had almost 500 employees to manage and, and build the job. So we could extrapolate that math. It was um, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people to the point where um, there wasn't even enough uh, local workers. We had an agreement uh, with Ireland at the time because there was just a, a shortage of work there. Uh, and the U.S. East Coast, specifically Boston at the time, had a shortage of workers. So um, I got to be very, very good friends uh, and am still in touch with uh, two of them. Um, folks that were exactly my age that came from Ireland, uh, left their families there and would come work for months at a time and, and uh, go home, you know, just for long weekends. Um, so uh, yeah, a, a crazy amount of people were involved. That's for sure. Yes. Oh, thank you for that. And Janelle, um, for you, I, I think it, the video, I, the video is great. And I, I hope students, um, also realize that in trades, there's a lot of technology, right? So even that misconception or maybe that's changed, but for me, that reminder of, um, you know, you and I live and breathe it every day, but that reminder that technology is um, cutting edge in the trades as well. Absolutely, Allison. I would say one of the coolest things just the other day, I was out in our prefab shop and, and my son happens to be, was a youth apprentice and he's an apprentice, uh, carpenter apprentice, and he was able to operate a vacuum that pulled the drywall up off of the bench and helped move it over and install it on the wall. And so when you talk just about technology, this is also advancement of our equipment. You know, you think about, oh, do I want to haul drywall for hours and hours? These are some of the tools that we have out there now that uh, allow you just to grab the screw gun and screw it, right? And you just gotta, you just gotta push in place. So great, great comment. Um, and I did get a question uh, that came to me. Um, so Mackenzie was wondering, what's the youngest you can be? And I'm not exactly sure which area she's talking about. I know for youth apprenticeship, that is juniors and seniors. And then registered apprenticeship, you can do right after graduation, correct? Correct. To be, And I think um, Jesse touched on it a little bit. You need a high school diploma and you need to be 18 uh, to move actually into that registered apprentice scenario. And you're correct, youth apprentices, we will hire youth apprentices. I, I, we have a senior coming in here in June re reporting literally to Tony, who has an interest in going down the construction management field at the tech school. Um, and she just really wants to, to broaden her view of, of what this could be. And so we're bringing her in as a youth apprentice, but in a field engineer youth apprenticeship role. So Mackenzie, I'm not sure where your, your path is headed. I, if, if, if I can guess, you're from Wrightstown, which is awesome. Um, I might actually know you. Um, so thanks for joining us today, if it is the person. Um, but let's connect if you have questions. I certainly would love to help you um, pave your, your career pathway. And we do have a short video um, about Bolt. So let me play that quickly. going to take longer to load than it will be to play. <laughs> Uh, 
awesome. There was a couple of those projects that were Tony's projects that he touched on before. So um, that was not planned, but coordinated. You can tell oh, this is yeah, really that crispy. Did you see it exactly what it goes? Video. That was inevitable. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much to all three of our speakers uh, today. We are, are approaching the top of the hour, but great information. And uh, we do have the contact information in the slides, the video with the, the, all that information will be on our website shortly. And everybody who signed up uh, also got a survey. So please do let us know, um, you know, we're looking at um, possibly uh, different uh, careers for next year. So what would you like to see in uh, virtual job spotlights for next year? So again, thank you to all of our guests. It was great information on architecture and construction and thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Take care. You too.